Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the filing period for property tax abatements passed on March 1st, 2018. Uh, anyone wishing to file will have to wait until 2019 under the statute. So we are closed in that department for this year. The annual town meeting and election will be held on Tuesday, March 13th at the Winnicott High School. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For those who cannot attend but wish to and are eligible to vote, will need to submit an application for an absentee ballot. Forms for that application are available on the town website and at the town clerk's office. Please follow the, the instructions carefully. Property owners who are eligible for veterans, elderly, and blind exemptions from property taxes must obtain, complete, and file applications with the town assessor's office not later than April 15, 2018. Likewise, property owners who are eligible for the Hampton Beach Precinct tax exemption must obtain the necessary form from the town assessor's office and file by February, uh, February, April 18th, April 15th, excuse me. Um, I did receive a, um, a bulletin from um, the Hampton School District, SA Unity. <clears throat> they are going to hold, uh, in conjunction with the Hampton PTA and the school district, a community safety forum on March 8th at the Marston School in the school cafeteria. The forum will begin at 6.30 p.m. Public is invited, obviously. The forum will address the safety measures in place at the schools and provide information on the collaboration with the police department and fire departments. There will be an opportunity for questions and, and <coughs> concerns from families and community members. Joining the Hampton SAU 90 administrators will be members of the Hampton Police Department, including Chief Sawyer, Deputy Chief Hobbs, and School Resource Officer, uh, Matthew Robinson. In addition, members of the Hampton Fire Department, Chief Ayotte, and the Emergency Response Team will be present to offer information and answer questions. School security is the number one priority for the Hampton School Board. They have established goals for the schools to ensure there is a high level of safety for students, faculty, and families. Please join us for this forum and bring your questions and concerns. Your input and feedback will help the district strengthen the security plans for the schools. If you have any questions prior to the meeting, please call the SAU office at 926-4560. Thank you. And signed by the superintendent of schools. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have changed <clears throat> one of our vendors in the public works department. Uh, we have a person that was collecting Freon uh, and battery recycling. We have changed that person uh, at the request of the EPA. Um, we now have a new vendor. There, it, is, it is a dollar more expensive per appliance to do what we're doing. Uh, and uh, we'll be recouping that money as we have in the past. Uh, also, they're going to be paying us something we have not had in the past. And that is they're going to pay the town 34 cents per pound for batteries that are recycled at the center. So that will be a new income stream to the town for revenue purposes. Now, now what kinds of batteries does that include? That's automobile batteries. Okay. We don't... Uh, we don't collect the small batteries uh, at this point, but I'd like to, because they're obviously a problem. Um, the Neil Underwood Bridge inspections, we have been inspecting the Neil Underwood Bridge and the lines that run underneath the bridge for our sewer. Um, they seem to be completely intact at this point. There's nothing wrong with them, although one is that the main sewer line is, is completely bare. There's no sand covering it at all. It's laying on the harbor bottom, but it is intact. Uh, we also notified um, the water department today that they have two lines running underneath the harbor at that location, and one of those lines <clears throat> appears to have been washed underneath. It's free. It's sort of s suspending itself on top of the harbor floor, and that's we were concerned because that could cause vibrations in the line and perhaps break it down, <coughs> which is not a good thing. But they do have two lines, so there's only one involved. They're going to examine that today after our notice. Uh, Public Works also noticed the, uh, notified the gas company because they also have a line running underneath the, uh, the harbor at that location. We, um, we had a notice from the Municipal Association that um, there's a House bill coming up before House Ways and it's a House of Ways Means bill <coughs> that was amended by them, uh, HB 1381 which deals with a change in valuation of uh, utility property in the town. 
Uh, I'm going to notify our representatives and Senator tomorrow that <coughs> our best calculation is the town will have to raise an additional $500,000 to make up for this bill should it pass. Um, that will depend on whether or not it's amended, whether or not it passes, uh, and that sum will, of course, increase because the way the bill is structured, it will decrease the value of their property for tax assessment as time goes along. And that's it, sir. Senator Morrow, or do you mean Senator Innes? Senator, Senator Innes, not tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, okay. Tomorrow. I didn't think, I didn't hear Innes. <laughs> questions? I have no questions. Thank Rusty. you, Mr. Well, you, would, you, you brought up the, the point on batteries and stuff. I had a gentleman the other day call me and was asking about batteries. And what do we do with the smaller batteries? We, there's no collection program for them. That's part of the problem, as I see it. Uh, people put the small batteries into the trash and they go to uh, the landfill. I'd prefer to see them come out of the trash altogether. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the problem is getting the special permits in order to handle them. And we'd have to file with the state for special permits and special requirements to do that. So right now the recommended way is to throw them in the trash? Well, not my recommended way. That's no, what they're that's doing. That's what they have to do. That's what they, they're doing. They can't get rid of them. they they got to do something with them. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and I would I would add to that that <clears throat> if you're going to get rid of, uh, usually at the uh, sometime during the year I do mine in September I replace all the batteries <coughs> in my smoke detectors. Yep. Um, I save the slips that they come in and reinsert them in the slips because you don't want to throw those into a trash container and possibly have the neutral and the batteries come together and cause an arc which could cause a fire. So you need to package those and, and seal them up so that they, they don't fall out and don't connect with each other. It's very important to do things like that. Rick, you said nothing? No, thank Phil? you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Welch. Uh, public Works, uh, please tell us um, the, uh, about the 9 million gallons that they processed during the storm and what our normal take is. Exactly, and, and what, what a tremendous, tremendous challenge that was, equal wow. to any operational with personnel. Just happened to have the report with me. Uh, I knew you would. We, uh, we started on, uh, this is from Thursday, 3-1. Uh, uh, the total amount of uh, waste coming into, liquid waste coming into, and solid waste coming into the wastewater treatment plant was 2.31 million gallons on that day. Uh, Friday, we had the storm, and we went from, from 2.31 million gallons to 4.36 million gallons. And on Saturday, we went to 5.96 million gallons. And on Sunday, we went to 9 million gallons. That's a significant amount of increase, most of it from infiltration. Uh, as you know, the water levels uh, in the marsh were very, very high. In fact, they were over the top of our line coming in from the south end of the beach to the, the treatment, uh, the uh, pumping station on Church Street. Those have not been completely repaired or relined. And there's a couple of covers that have not been replaced yet. It's a, it's a work in progress and has been a work in progress now for several years. Obviously, they were taking water from the marsh. Uh, and there was water also coming into some of the manholes up on the main streets, which were underwater as well. Uh, we're about at our max as far as the amount of water we can take and treat at the treatment plant. One of the bad things about this is it's salt water. Salt water kills the bugs, as we call them, in the plant that, that, that in fact, eat the material that's bad for us and shouldn't be discharged into the environment. Uh, they're efforting to see that we have very healthy bugs at the plant at this moment. So, and we have no indication that we're, we're in trouble. But we need to keep a close eye on it. Uh, there's going to have to something be done about sealing those manholes and redoing them and sealing, those, sealing the tops of them and so forth. We are working on that very energetically but there's just so much to do and so little time in which to do it. But we are progressing well with the funds that we have available. Thank you. And where there were no violations of, uh, with any levels of discharge of, of effluent, is that correct? There were no violations whatsoever. Our staff worked overtime to make sure there were not violations. Correct. And uh, it was widely reported that on the Merrimack, there were uh, myriad uh, municipalities that had raw sewage uh, discharge uh, into the Merrimack River. That was in Boston Papers. And uh, despite uh, equal hardships here in Hampton, uh, our great crew under your leadership and uh, Mr. Jacobs and Jennifer Hale 
and Michael at the station um, and those people. Not one discrepancy with the storm. And it's, it's another incredible story uh, of this municipal platform uh, and how it executes in, in the harshness of terrain, population, and uh, we do it alone. We, we do this alone here. We do it with our money and incredib in incredibly, incredibly well. And uh, I would segue into this, this uh, um, recognition of how extraordinary this municipal platform is and how well this town is run uh, to say that Articles 10, 11, and 12 are coming up uh, for labor contracts uh, in this next election, um, this, this next few weeks. And those are for three different bargaining units. And those are the people that made this happen when we all took shelter, when we all hoped that things went well, when we all delegated that authority uh, to perform these civic duties in this municipal service platform. And I think there could be no better uh, commendation, no better praise, no better reason than to vote yes on 10, 11, and 12 than to look at uh, how all of these units and all those that aren't up, um, but to, to support those and to vote yes. And uh, if you could pass that on, Mr. Welch, to your department heads, I know the, the chairman and the rest of the board feels the exact same way. I certainly will. Thank you. And then I would like to just talk <coughs> briefly, if I may. Um, Mr. Welch, I, I know there was a storm. I do not discount those that spoke on Article Number 9 this evening, Mr. Chairman. We did ask to have it on. I know there was a storm. That's probably the reason it's not on. It, it makes me uncomfortable that, that um, they have legitimate questions as citizens, and perhaps we can get it on next week, or there's an information package that uh, we can put out to clarify some of the questions, uh, because uh, they didn't get answered, and I know it's because of the storm, and if we could, uh, we, we could get that information out to some of these people that have requested it, and certainly I would be interested in a, a synopsis of that. And thank certainly you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question on infiltration. Infiltration. Yeah. And we have a plan in effect <clears throat> to be dealing with them, to, to be repairing infiltration, to decrease infiltration. That's correct. It's It's... We have a, a very obsolete sewer system as far as the collection system is concerned. We have a lot of streets in town that have old clay pipes. <clears throat> they are dry joints, that is to say they're not solid like they are with lock joints, which we would have in, in or welded joints, which we'd have in, in plastic pipe that we're now putting in. Um, we're going to have infiltration, and I know the state allows a, a percentage of infiltration, two to three, up to five percent is normal. Uh, but we, we have a lot more than 5%. I mean, this time of the year, we are normally running somewhere about 2 to 2.5 two two and million gallons a day. 9 million gallons is not normal. It's all infiltration. Uh, we need to replace a significant portion of our piping system in order to stop that problem. And, of course, I look at this from a different standpoint than I think the layperson does in that <clears throat> every year, I have to meet with a wastewater treatment plant, and we have to talk about what we're going to put in the budget in order to run the plant from a chemical standpoint. We're treating water that doesn't need to be treated, and in doing that, we're spending a su substantial amount of extra money for nothing, basically. Uh, that water shouldn't be there, but it's going to take a number of years, in fact, probably a couple of decades provided we spend an awful lot of money to get that to stop. Okay. And another question, is there any evidence that it's people pumping <clears throat> sump pumps into the sewer system? We have a number of areas in town where, in fact, that is the case, uh, simply because we know they're pumping because of where they are. We know what the water levels are in those areas, uh, and we know if they were pumping out of the street, we'd see it. They're not. And that's illegal, isn't it? It is illegal under state and federal law. Okay. Thank you.